Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a stat system. This is part two of how to make a stat system. If you didn't watch part one, go watch part one of the updated version. Make sure it's updated. Uh, go watch part one. As you can see, I already have some stuff done. So I've had a couple people, honestly, a good amount of people comment on the video asking like how to actually put the stats to use. Like we made a stat system, we made it save and all that, but how do we actually make it, you know, you to use? So I'm gonna show you guys how to put it to use where you know uh your strength based on your strength your punches will hit harder based on your agility you'll be or sorry your stamina you'll be able to move faster and stuff so yeah this is just showing you guys how to integrate it plus i uh i made the code a little better that's what i usually try to do i usually try to add things as well as make things better so let's go ahead and get to part two okay so oh wait yeah that was one thing yeah okay so let's go ahead and get to it okay so the first thing i want to address is i guess we'll just go over here okay so open up starter gui open up starter player and then open up the stats gui so you guys see we have the stat script we have the local stat script inside of the stats gui let's go ahead and move that to starter player scripts which is inside of starter player and stuff you guys know nowadays i put all my uh i do local scripts inside of starter player scripts and server scripts inside of server script service i like to keep it like that rather than keeping a script inside of the ui and stuff but that's how i used to do things before hence why we had it so yeah now we can get into the actual scripting so let me open up the stat script right we had to make a couple changes first things first we're going to change how we reference the stats gui since we reparented it so what i'm going to say is i'm going to change this right here the stats gui variable and say player dot player gui wait for child then you're going to put stats gui and then you're going to go above all three of these variables so press enter then go above and then you're going to get you're going to create a variable for the user input service so let's say local uis is equal to game get service user input service right then i'm going to create a function um in front of all these this is going to be the first function on the script so it's going to be a regular function so function right and then you're going to uh call it stats update and as the name applies it's going to update all the stats so stats update enter right and then pretty much what you're going to do oh dang i'm supposed to figure out a file loop which would have made this easy yeah i'm supposed to actually change that um uh yeah i was supposed to use like two four loop, but it's too late to figure that out now anyway so you guys see right here we have this you guys notice we have this twice right here we open the stats menu and also um whenever we change the stat so instead of having it that having all those lines that are having like eight lines of code we can just have we can just have inside of one function and then just call it twice. So we're just gonna copy all of this, select it, control C, control V, boom. Then you're gonna delete all of this, right? And then you're just going to uh, call the function, so stats update, right? Then you're gonna go down here, same thing, delete it, and then just call the function stats update, right? And then, um, I believe, yeah, that's really it for, that's really it for there. Yeah, that's, I feel like I'm forgetting something um this does no no no. yeah that's it okay so yeah and then we're gonna go up here right we're gonna go into this for loop and then we're gonna make this easier so you guys can really um delete the else if statement so delete the else if statements then delete the if statement along with the end right and then boom we'll just move this over right so pretty much what you're gonna do is you're you're simply just going to send over the name of the text button instead of the uh instead of the specific thing because we'll just check we'll just check uh based we'll check the text button's name on the server side to just see which stat we need to change so we're just going to say v.name right which is going to be add stat v.name right so again shorten shortening the code and then i'm going to go down here and i'm going to make a basic m1 system simply just so that i can um have it so we can test the combat and stuff since we're you know we're having uh strength and stuff uh so yeah if you want if you want an explanation as to how the code works in depth go watch my combat videos and stuff i'm just really going through this okay so let's create a variable for our attack number since these are basic m1 so attack number you know is good to one then let's set up the user input service function so uis that input began um what uis that input b i'm so confused. wait what did i put oh my ball i put gui my bad user input service make sure you get the right one so input began, connects function, in parentheses, you're going to put input, comma, processed, right? And then press enter, you're then going to say if input, the user, user input type is equal to enter, uh, user input type dot mouse button one, and not processed, enter, means player's not typing in chat, then set the if statement, so if attack number is equal to one, enter, you're then set uh, the attack number's value equal to two, and then you're going to fire the remote event, so 
sets event super fire server in quotation marks name the event of course we m1 then comma quotation marks you're going to first put left punch and enter and then going to say else if attack number is equal to two enter then attack number is equal to one once again then you're going to fire the remote event like like we did uh the first statement so we're going to say stats event fire server quotation marks m1 comma quotation marks right punch right Boom, now we can move to the server side. So let's go ahead and open up server script service. So as you guys can clearly see, I have two animations here and stuff. Simply just click the plus icon, um, click the animation, throw your animation ID in there along with the name. And stuff naming is very important and stuff. So these are just basic animations. You guys have to use your own animation IDs. And yeah, this for the M1 system if you're including that, right? So then I just reordered this. So just copy and then just put it. We're gonna get the data store before we get the remote event. And I made a few modifications to this. We need to add a uh, hitbox as well as adjust the player stamina. I mean, the player's walk speed based on their uh, stamina, or yeah, yeah, based on their stamina. So we're gonna go after the wild not loop right, and then I'm gonna say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed is plus equal to stamina that value which means it's going to increase from the default to however many uh, points they have in stamina so if the default walk speed is 16 and i have six stamina points then it's you know going to increase my walk speed is going to be 22 so then we're going to uh, create the hitbox for the the combat so we're going to say local hitbox is equal to instance that new quotation marks you're going to part parent this to the characters oh sorry parent this to the player character that humanoid root part right then enter you're then going to say hitbox that name so of course equal to hit box right and then we're going to start setting its properties so hitbox that anchored is equal to false hitbox that massless is equal to true hitbox that can collide is equal to false hitbox that transparency is equal to one unless you're testing hitbox that size is equal to vector three dot new five comma six comma five point five enter then you're going to say hitbox dot color is equal to color three dot new one comma zero comma zero that's for testing then hitbox dot uh wait what was this oh yeah pivot to character oh sorry player i keep forgetting player dot character dot humanoid root part dot c frame and i'm going to uh scroll down a little right and then after this we're going to create the world constraint so local world constraint is equal to instance dot new position marks for the world constraint to parent this once again to the oh sorry this wait what does this go uh oh sorry parent this is the hitbox yeah so world constraint dot part zero is equal to hitbox then world constraint dot part one is equal to character i keep forgetting i keep forgetting equal to player dot character dot humanoid rule part right then you're going to set up a function so player that character added connect function and parentheses put character so you're literally just going to copy everything we just did so every time you know the player dies and stuff we want them you know obviously their stem their walk speed to be updated as well as have a hitbox so let's just control c control v boom and then uh you could really i mean you could delete the player part i mean it's not really changing much but or I think actually no, it's probably for the rest you do actually, but I don't think yeah I don't think it really would cause any I don't think it would honestly cause any issues, but yeah, so we'll just do it like that, and then we are done um with the adjustments to the first function. We don't we can change anything with the data saving. We did make some changes here. So first I'm gonna get the sound server. So I'm gonna get that right here. So I'm gonna say local ss is equal to game get service now service right this is for the punches in the sound service. I have some punch sound effects. You guys can get them from toolbox. Just search up uh, punch sounds so here we're going to change this so we're going to save event so we're actually going to put a space actually and then we're going to get the player's character I'm going to say local character is equal to player dot character and then i'm going to put an and here i'll say and player dot stats that available points is greater than zero i'm going to put that here I don't even want us to proceed if uh you know they have less and then we could really put a space in between and we're going to type this and then change change it uh we're going to we're going to drag the code over i should say so i'm going to say 4i comma v impairs you're going to say player dot stats get chilled children close parentheses enter right you're going to say if stat type is this is why i said naming is very important is equal to quotation marks add right is equal to add dot 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 oh sorry on the outside dot 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 then v dot name dot 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 in quotation marks 
button so pretty much remember um right here the name of the buttons name of the buttons is add the word add then followed by the stat type and then the word button so you need to make sure this matches up with whatever the name of uh, your buttons are and stuff right so yeah so add so if it matches right then we're going to drag all the stuff so you guys can drag all this so control c control v and then you guys can delete that and then i believe we have an extra end oh no actually i think we have we need another one. wait no i'm so confused oh oh i see the issue right here okay there we go yeah now we're good so yeah so once we have that you know minus one uh you want to change this to v dot value plus equals one and then uh you know player stat update and then yeah then we're gonna go ahead and add the event for the m1 and then that'll be it so i'm gonna click this arrow enter then gonna say else if event type is equal to rotation marks you're gonna say m1 enter we're gonna set up the animation track so local at is equal to character dot humanoid dot animator load animation in parentheses you're gonna say script regular bracket um script regular bracket arg1 and then at play close parentheses right and then, oh, of course, you're going to play the punch sound effect. So punch sound effect, play, right? Then we're going to set the rate casting. So we're going to say local start position is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot hitbox dot position. Then local direction is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot hitbox. Or sorry, wait. Wait, 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 isn't that supposed to be? Yeah, it, was, yeah, it should be like this. Hitbox that C frame. I don't know why I had it like, I had like something else actually before. Anyway, so we're going to have it like that, right? Or, huh. Now I'm thinking, because the human room for, um, I think, I think it should be fine. Yeah, I think it should be fine. But yeah, so we're going to have our direction like that. And then we're going to set the Raycast parameters. We're going to say a little Raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new close parentheses enter you're going to say raycast params that filter type is equal to enum dot raycast filter type that exclude raycast params dot filter descendants instances is equal to special brackets you're going to say character get descendants right then we're going to put a space in between we're going to create the array we're going to say local ray is equal to a workspace raycast you're going to throw the start position comma direction comma raycast params and then boom right then you can submit if statement. You're gonna say if ray and ray dot instance uh, dot parent by first child humanoid. Make sure it's either an NPC or a player. And of course ray dot instance dot parent dot humanoid dot health is greater than zero. Make sure they're not dead. Then we're gonna create a variable for the enemy character. So enemy character is equal to ray dot instance dot parent. Then you're going to say enemy character that humanoid that else here's where strength comes into play so we're going to say is less than equal to our base value so we'll say like five is our base value and you're going to uh add that plus player dot stats that strength that value and then you're going to divide that by whatever value you see fit and stuff you can adjust the numbers and stuff that works i was just going to go with like 100. you could also make this even more complex by including defense too like like after you do after you add it you can then subtract it minus the player the um the enemy's defense value and stuff so that it'll also take some damage off and stuff if you want it to also you know go that far and lastly i'm gonna say ss.dbz punch sound play and then yeah that's it let's go ahead and test to make sure this works as always if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models you guys may come either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description so as you guys can see, um, I'm clearly moving faster and stuff. So the walk speed is increased. Let me got my punches. So look, you guys will see. Ah, I see. Okay, hold on. Yeah, never mind. Okay, so change this. Change this back. I see why I had this before. Okay, so delete this part right here. So that must be the issue. Oh, I also forgot to do this. Every time, direction times three. I always forget to do that. I don't know why. I always forget. Okay. So why is it? Oh. I guess the range. So yeah, you guys see I'm doing it. Uh, let's see this. Let's say this right. If I switch my strength, if I increase my strength to like thirty, we do a lot of damage. You guys see we're doing more, or well, we're doing more. Okay, let's show like three hundred, right? Yeah, we're doing more. It's just it's very incremental. That's the reason. That's honestly the reason why. Let me set their let me set their health back. That's actually the that's honestly the reason why I actually wanted to um. 
uh, what's it called? That's the reason why I wanted to uh, divide it by so, by so much so that you couldn't, you know, be one shotting people. Yeah, you see, I'm doing much more damage. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this updated video, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you're new and stuff. Um, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys been showing on the channel. I really do appreciate it and stuff. Y'all been going crazy for it with the support. Really do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.